These initial assumptions that we went in with, they're not playing out the way we thought. Simply because I think the technology was fundamentally misunderstood. There's a lot of confusion around AI, as if, you know, all of it can be bundled into the same package and then to solve all the problems we have. But I think it's really important that at Ericsson we can show the real value of AI. Go into the field, test with our customers, show the real gains, and explain things in a much easier way. Hi, everybody. This is Leonard Lee, Executive Analyst at NextCurve. I'm here with my friends from Ericsson. Mel, you want to introduce yourself? My name is Mary Carol Kantarchi. I go with Mel, and I'm a strategic product manager for AI in RAN at Vinu. It's a really important time to be talking about this because I think we're entering another AI hype cycle in the telco industry. And one of the things I've noticed is starting with this term AI, we really need to unpack it. Using the right AI model in the right place to solve the right problem. That's something we bring in with the domain expertise. So once you have the domain expertise, it's much easier to figure out which problems are actually good to solve with AI. Of course, the fundamental issue is that to be able to do the inference on time when it comes to the RAN domain, we have AI acceleration in our Ericsson Silicon that can actually accelerate AI to the level that we can run this inference functions to features like AI native link adaptation. The one that actually we did with Bell Canada. I have my view on how the industry is moving forward with AI, but what's your take? We need to talk about tangible things, right? What we have done in the field. We have up to 10% spectral efficiency increase and up to 20% throughput increase. Having obtained them in a real live network cluster is uh, something really significant. You need to build the models, you need to test them, and then show what gains you're getting, because otherwise everything seems like a very theoretical level. If we can accelerate the understanding of these things, then I think we have a much better AI conversation. How we develop the AI models, basically how we choose the AI models, uh, depending on what part of the REN stack we are implementing it for, and then having the right architecture to be able to monetize the existing assets, and then also having the right uh, hardware in place uh, to be able to do fast and fearless. I think these are uh, like all the fundamental things that we need to have in place and then that means we're setting on the right foot to start talking about AI. With our platforms, we can enable developers to develop yeah. our apps much faster than before so they can come up with new ideas, utilize the platform capabilities that we have. Let's talk about some of the conversations you're having with your customers about what all this investment in AI for RAN will ultimately yield. There will be new AI applications coming. We already started seeing the smart glasses, we're now using them. We have the robotics applications, personal AI agents, and it will impact the traffic on our networks. The shape of the traffic is also changing from downlink heavy to uplink heavy, and we need to be prepared for that. AI applications are being unlocked with differentiated connectivity, but at the same time, AI is optimizing networks to perform better so that we can serve these new type of applications. There may even be a need for the industry to rethink what the infrastructure looks like. It's really important to be future ready in, in terms of infrastructure and in terms of the software that we have in the RAN. We are doing this in real world deployments, doing it with existing assets by using our flexible architecture. So we're maximizing the ROI. 
we can support fast and energy efficient AI inference in the field by using Ericsson Silicon. So these are really important capabilities that we have in place to get things moving. waiting for 6G, we are showing the value of AI today.